Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's episode of Forging Fates. As always, hello and welcome to the New Age Geeks channel. If you're new here, we are building an inclusive space for people of all walks of life through the power of friendship, magic, and tabletop role-playing games. Tonight, we have Forging Fates, a sober D&D campaign set in the critical role world of Exandria. Got it out the first time that time. Following our adventuring party, the Fists of Fate. As always, we are partnered with the Phoenix, a nonprofit group building a community of people in recovery, aiming to end the stigma around the rehabilitation journey from substance use through a sober, active lifestyle. They have an app that you can use to schedule in-person or virtual events, including yoga, D&D, meditation, rock climbing, just to name a few. So click the link below, download the app, and connect with a new community of friends to support your journey. I'm like, I'm a professional, everyone. We're getting through it this time. And <laughs> I'm going to open it up to the rest of the cast. Hello, rest of the cast. You guys look great tonight. I love the costumes for those of you that are now wearing costumes. Good talk, everyone. Good talk. <laughs> a lot of interaction. Loving it. Loving it. <laughs> Thank you. Listen, man, we're, we're all exhausted because <laughs> you beat us up with a dragon last time. I did. I'm doing um, guys, if you like what we do and you'd like to support the channel, you can drop a tip in the tip jar. Get yourself something nice from our online merch shop. Or donate to one of our Patreon tiers. Anything you can send our way really helps us bring more of this content to you. And you can also support us by subscribing to all of our socials, along with watching, liking, and sharing our videos. You too can become one of the New Age Geeks simply by joining our Discord or subscribing to our Twitch and YouTube channels. Perks include moderated chats, emotes by one of our favorite geeks, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. And chat rooms with the cast and other members of our growing community. Once again, thank you, geeks, for joining us tonight on this episode of Forging Fate. All right. Does anyone else have anything they want to talk about? Yes. Go ahead, Jim. Oh, my you voice go. is gone. Um, next week, you have to tune in to Goodberry Cafe. Uh, we will be playing a GM-less game where you're still deciding what we're going to be playing, but we'll have a new cast of guests. And we're very excited to learn a new game with you. So definitely tune in same time next week. Okay. Do you do you know who your cast is yet or no? I do. Okay. But we will link we will announce them on socials. Alrighty. <laughs> <laughs> if no one has anything else, let's jump right into tonight's episode of Forging Fates. Look at this, everyone. We're like a well-oiled machine here. We're just fucking moving. Um, okay, so picking up where we last left off, after a tense meeting with all of the delegates of the independent cities of uh, Taldore, the one and only Whisper had a encounter with what the group would come to know as her brother, Bellon, who accused Whisper of murdering her aunt, the former leader of Liringorn and declaring that there is now a bounty on her head and she is to be brought to Liringorn to face judgment and investigation into that crime she's allegedly committed. I think she did it personally, but that's a personal note. Uh, <laughs> um, seems like the type. So as you guys kind of re- Organize yourselves after enjoying the rest of the evening. Made your way back to your home where Whisper kind of unloaded a little bit of her backstory to the team. Eventually, you'll kind of start to settle off into your own spaces. Gormrog staying up for several hours to clean the residence uh, compulsively. And Finnick took, uh, took herself to a private meeting. And... As during that meeting, as she finished up, Whisper, Clover, and Gormog were alerted to the presence of another in the, the residence as the sound of a firearm clicking woke them up to a young human woman with a firearm po po pointed at Whisper's face. From there, a battle ensued with the young lady, uh, eventually being joined by an older human with a long gun who uh, had a position outside and declared that he is here to execute a warrant for a whisper. Eventually, 
the battle turned to the fist's favor, and they were able to take out the small young girl before giving chase to the older gentleman. Uh, as that chase ensued, Whisper made her way outside before being dive-bombed by Bellon and his wyverns. And his wyvern. Um, the battle flipped against the fist at this point, causing several of the party members to go down as they tried to rally around and hold off Bellon, who seemed to be more than what at least Whisper remembers, his eyes giving off a strange glow and his body restitching itself in the moonlight. Eventually, you guys were able to get the upper hand on Bellin, and his wyvern took the opportunity to retrieve him, pull him from the scene where he came to consciousness once again and flew off towards Laringorn. As the fists kind of gathered themselves up once more, healing themselves a bit, getting ready to try and understand what had happened. Uh, Tristan, Tristan uh, took the body of the young girl and began to decide whether to torch it or bury it or do what with it. And eventually the sound of approaching guards came to your all of your ears as that is where we we're going to pick up as several guards wearing the variety of armor which you've seen some from Western some from the Ashari some from Taldore and some from Western all begin to approach what oh sort of finally stand up and help Gormarg up as well. No, I'm just gonna... Oh, okay. I guess we're getting up. Sure. All right. Yep. Uh-huh. And... Where is everybody else? Tristan is in the back. Uh, Whisper's in her room and Clover is in her room. Okay. She's in her room with doesn't have a wall and is pretty much right next to you guys. Right. Like 10 feet away. The, the, the wall is still there. The window's gone, but the wall is mostly there. I'll just sort of shout out to anybody who can hear me. Guys, we have company. As you say that, the guards kind of move into the space of your, uh, your home and uh, one of them shouts out, wearing the Western armor. Uh, is is everyone okay? Uh, no. Few of us are badly injured, but we're all alive. What what happened? We were attacked by, by the first rider of Laringorn and some assassins. Uh, as you say that, a few of the guards kind of move up to your two space and kind of lean down to try and help you to your feet and check to see if you have any mortal wounds they can attempt to patch. Um, wh what was all the explosions? The assassins. Gunshots. As, as you say, gunshots. You see uh, two of the white stone arm, uh, riflemen kind of move forward to enter the space with the both of you. Um, uh, did you get a good look at the guns they used? Yeah, uh, one, one was short, one was long. Kind of holds out his rifle. Uh, did it look anything like this? Um, roll a... Yeah, the one, the one with mutton chops had one about that length. Roll an investigation ch check for me. <laughs> Can I also do so? Yeah, the both of you can go ahead and roll. Can I can I roll at advantage because I was up close and personal with him? Uh, sure. Why not? Hey, I, I was shooting my shot. I figured. I, I got a nineteen. I got a sixteen and a seventeen. All right, not not half bad. Not a nineteen, but close enough. Did you roll, Finnick? 
19. A 19? Okay. Um, as you both look at the rifle, it is identical in construction to the rifle that he has. Yeah, no, no. See, see, th- this part's the same. Th- this part, it's the same gun. Yeah, exactly the same. As you say that, they kind of both look at each other and sort of step back into their own private conversation. Um, is anyone hurt? Do, uh, do you guys need any assistance with anything? I mean, if you're capable of healing, I would not say no to that. Um, we don't and if anybody's capable of patching up a wall, I would not say no to that. We'll, we'll let the, the Lord Mayor know, and I'm sure she'll have someone come and repair that. Um, but... No, no healers here at the moment. Um, we can request someone if you'd like. How long would that take? Maybe an hour. Maybe asleep by then. Okay. I, I, I think we'll be okay. Did they say what they they wanted? They, they would wanted... try and to. Yeah. Clover, you cut out. Sorry. They wanted to kidnap my friend. Kind of t- the Western Guard kind of turns his attention to, to you up over in the the window. What? Which one? Uh. Uh. She's not here. Is she? Oh, did she get room. caught? Is she with them? No, she's no. resting and hiding. She got pretty banged up. He almost killed her. You have to go after them. We'll, uh, we'll report all this to the Lord Mayor. Um... Yeah, uh, something's not right with that guy. Because uh, his eyes weren't eyes. They were moons. Just... Just glowing discs. Orbs. Yeah, and, and like... Anytime he got cut, these weird things, little phalanges came out and stitched themselves and pulled him back together. It was gross. It was really, really gross. And like, I punched a wyvern. Am I under arrest? Um, n- not I've never been in trouble with currently. the law before. I... Uh, we don't he see attacked us. A reason to arrest any of you yet. Um, I don't, yeah, I'm not don't see a reason they were you were attacked on your own property so there's no reason for us to arrest you at this moment though i know your friends having a warrant is um a difficult situation that will have to be navigated and as he's saying this you see uh from up above two large uh winged uh, devices almost kind of flying into your location you see on one of them the short uh, woman kind of this hair flowing behind her and another uh, stockier uh, half orc male who kind of glides in as well they both pull down and land on the ground next to you they pop off their, their uh, flying device and it, the wings crumple up into the staff uh, one of them being the familiar face of Clover's sister. Where's Clover? Is she okay? Here. She's in her room. I'm like, I'm literally like poking out of my wall right now. Like, like my feet are in my room, but the rest of me is like out in the yard. She uh, drops her flying staff and runs over to you. What happened? They broke my desk, and they broke my bunk bed, and my journal's all ripped up. Are you okay, though? Yeah. Well, what what happened? Who? What happened? A girl just showed up in my room while me and Whisper were sleeping and then tried to steal her. 
idea. Well, as long as you're all right, um, maybe we'll uh, I'll stay here tonight and just keep an eye out for things. Can you help help us feel better? Do you have any of the things that Mom has? Um, yeah, I think I can. Who who needs it most? Um. Warm rug and whisper, maybe, but I don't know. Maybe you can ask everybody. Um. Uh, Gorm rug, did you uh, did you need a little, a little bit of the healing juice? I got a little magic here I can give you. I would not say no. Uh, she makes her way over to you and casts cure wounds. You gain 10 hit points. Hell. Where's uh, Whisper? That is a good question. Whisper? Thank you. You all right, Whisper? <clears throat> I do not think she's going to be so keen on joining us when she knows there is people attempting to kidnap, capture, and or murder her. All right, well, I certainly don't Potentially with political ties. I, I don't want to go in intruding on her if she needs some space to herself. I'm sure tonight was pretty traumatic. Uh, as yeah. that happens, like you see a familiar halfling Another familiar halfling make his way through the crowd, um, dressed in do, 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 do. a <laughs> very official-looking outfit. Um, this the blue of Western, a bright golden uh, badge on one uh, right on his uh, left breast, and you, the uh, silver the silver pauldrons kind of draped over his shoulder. He makes his way up to the rest of you. Uh, Clover, are you okay? It's Lyndon, right? Yeah. <coughs> okay. Lyndon! He hugs you back instantly, like, pulls you in tight. I'm, what happened? I'm, I'm glad you're okay. What? What? What is all this? These monsters came in and tried to steal Whisper, and then they destroyed my bedroom. Is Whisper okay? Yeah, she's in her room. Well, you should check on her, Linden. Uh, uh, I'm sure if she needs checking, she'll let me know. But no one's checked on her, and now you're here and you asked about her, so maybe you should go check on her, and maybe you should take her some like jerky or something. <laughs> you see him instantly <laughs> turn red. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, in a minute. Um, so I'll get, just for, I need a. We gotta make a report about this incident, so we. You know, have all the information. Um, they've uh, actually got a promotion, so I'm kind of um, in charge here now. So I got to make sure this is all done appropriately. Congratulations. Congrats, Lyndon. Thanks. Um, I mean, it only took dying, right? Uh-huh. But uh, the Lord Mayor wants me to help investigate the corruption in the shield, so that's my job now. Mm-hmm. So I make sure everything got, gets done right. Know anybody with mutton chops? Not that I'm aware of. It's a weird hairstyle to have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> what question? Yeah, a real big hat, too. Yeah, they both had hats. He, he was holding on to one of those guns that they have. Oh, was he? I'm going to point to the to the two guys who are like, was it anything like this? Okay. Well, I'll, uh, I'll have to follow that thread, I'm sure. See what they know that they're not telling the rest of us. Um. So what can we do for you guys tonight to make sure this you guys are good? Uh, 
hotel. I need a new wall and window okay. and desk oh. and I, journal. Okay. I can try and help. And I'll just start casting mending. Okay. It's going to take you a while to repair the window, but... Oh, I didn't surely. plan on doing a window. <laughs> it's like her bunk bed and her desk okay. and her cool. journal if it's salvageable. Journal's the easiest one to do. It takes you almost no cool. time at all, but... I'll start with that. Okay. Um, Thank you. Yeah, so the journal's repaired and you start kind of fixing up the room so at least she can sleep there, but... uh as the investigation kind of winds down for the evening, getting each of your statements about what happened, um, the a, a two shields are placed out in front of your home, and your sister Aster stays there as well, staying in the room with you for the night, Clover. Um, before Lyndon leaves, can I have a private word with him? Of course. Lyndon, I know that this has nothing to do with tonight, but, like, have you heard from Felix? Um, I had a brief conversation with him not too long ago. When was not too long ago? I think two days ago, right before this all kind of got started. Why does he hate me? And he just, it's, I don't think he hates you, Clover. I think he's just dealing with a lot. He, um... Well, I thought he was dead. Well, he's not dead, I'll tell you that. But, um, he... He said he had some vision, and it said it was like seeing through someone else's eyes, and the numbers were overwhelming, and he had to kind of see that, that, that line through and see what that meant. Why is he talking to you and not me? I think it's just... I've known him longer. That's not true. I've literally known him longer. Well, he's been my friend. I guess you haven't known him longer. But I've known him longer than I've known you, so... By, so like, a, should, what, a, a 30 minutes? He should... Well, next time you talk to him, tell him he abandoned me, and now I'm all by myself, and that his numbers are stupid. Well, you're not by yourself. I mean, you have these people. Yeah. While this is happening, I want to go upstairs and knock on Whisper's door. You're all on the first floor still. Like, your your rooms are all on the first floor. Oh, okay. Second well, floor I'm going to go over. Being, I'm going to go over and <laughs> knock on Whisper's door. Okay. Whisper? It, it's Finnick. Uh, uh, what's up? Can I come in? Uh, y yeah, sure. Um, just slowly, like, open the door and shut it behind me. Are you okay? I'm sitting on my bed. Uh, I think so. Is there anything I can do for you? I think I just need a rest. Do you want someone in the room with you? Maybe. But what if they come back? We have a little bit of extra support tonight. They have two guards posted outside and Clover's sister is here. Lyndon, Lyndon's here as well. He's looking into this. Okay. Do they think I did it? I didn't ask him. I didn't. But, uh... Well, you said she was murdered after you left, right? Well, she was definitely alive when I left. So, yeah. That makes sense. So, it couldn't have been you. Oh. I believe you, and I'm going to help you. Thanks, Finnick. Of course. I don't have bunk beds in here like Clover does. 
I have a bedroll in my room. I can go grab it. All right. That that might be nice. Just hang tight. I'll I'll be right back. Okay. Anyone want to do anything else while we settle in for the night? Okay. Uh, eventually, I'm gonna find Tristan. A uh, I don't know if you noticed, but the entire guardsmen of Taldore were at our front door uh, while you were back here digging a hole. Um, no, did I notice any of that at all? Yes, one hundred percent. You noticed all that. <laughs> what? I, I was waiting to see. I didn't want to interrupt and not know if I should be see, not say anything or not. So I've been. Yeah, you definitely noticed it. <laughs> okay, so. Is there, how much time has gone past, or is there anything I could be doing while that was happening? Because I whatever you want, Donald. Okay, so it's, then she's buried. If that's what you <laughs> wanted to do, sure. <laughs> yes. Cool. Right. Uh, cool. You, cool. you were set on your task, <laughs> and you saw it through to the end. She's raging. Regardless <laughs> of the, the, regardless of the law enforcement that was at our doorstep. <laughs> <laughs> I would have done other things. I didn't know if we were okay. <laughs> um, All good. No, but they, they seem to understand that um, we were unjustly accosted and Lyndon and Asta are here at the moment as well. Um, Asta's going to be staying with us tonight, but uh, I think I almost certainly know that this was not exactly the legally sanctioned thing that the assailants presented it to be. The warrant may be, but timing, probably not. Something's not making sense at all. Well, a lot of things don't make sense, but that's just life in Alexandria. Um, what we need to do is make sure Wisp is safe. Because... Yeah. There's more than one wyvern in their army. And that's largely the reason why we barely scraped by. Um, had it not been for that wyvern, might have gone a different way. But um, we need to get stronger. We need to get smarter. We need to get quicker. We need to get stealthier. We need to do what we do, but do it better than we do. Because more is coming. I just don't know what that's going to look like. If it's going to keep snowballing the way that it's snowballing right now, we have guards in front of our house. We are being attacked from long and short. Do you is it do you really think it's wise to stay here to keep coming back to this area? I I understand this is what we are and I want I don't want to leave more than anything. I keep wanting to go to Marie Lens board and anything I can think about, but it feels like every time we come back here We're in worse trouble. I just don't know what our next move is going to be. Are we staying here? Are we Are we going to move? Are we going after somebody? Are we going to... Because the one thing I don't want above anything is anything else happening and things ever are just happening. And our friends, all the new of them getting hurt, and I feel like it's just following us. Gormy, we, like you said, but we, we, we need to do that, I think, in a different place. I don't think we can stay here much longer. There's nowhere else we can really go that was gonna be any safer. You know me, I'm going to follow you to my death. 
and mm. I want us to just be safe for more than a short amount of time. And it just doesn't feel like here is the place to do that. Just, Think about it, and I'll let you know. And I'm going to put a couple of kicks down on the last spot to make it solid. <laughs> and go back inside of them. Okay. So, <clears throat> as you all find your rooms for the evening, getting ready to bed down, Finnick joining Whisper in her own room. You all begin to drift off into unconsciousness. Finnick, as you begin to pass into the realm of dreams, you open your eyes to find yourself in a dark forest. The trees gnarled and twisted, the ground, this thick layer of mist. Ahead of you, you hear the sound of crackling flames. Instantly, you feel your heart begin to race. Uh, unable to control yourself, you begin to move towards that sound. You've, As you break the tree line, you find yourself standing in front of your home, the one you've found in Western. And you see flames licking out from each of the windows, the door burning, the walls engulfed in flames. And as you see that, you hear the sounds of your friends inside, screaming, burning inside. As the, vi the sight comes into your eyes, you instantly feel your body be lock up and become paralyzed. You fall down to your knees, unable to control your own actions. As you hear those screams filling your head, you see each of your friends outside of the house now, their bodies on fire. You see a familiar wyvern and a familiar man in armor, two swords diving into, into Whisper's chest. You see the wyvern chomp down on Gormrog's burning form, the tail lashing out and slamming into Tristan's chest. And as it pulls Tristan up in the air and whips him down on the ground, you see it launch once more and slice open Clover's stomach. In your mind, you hear over and over again a pair of familiar voices from your childhood. Aberrant mind, aberrant mind, your kind should be left behind. She, and you feel the weight from those words, what that means. You watch helplessly as the wyvern and Bellon keep striking against your friends, each wound dropping them before they stand up to be struck again and dropped. You hear them screaming for help. Look, their eyes, each time that it is, they are struck, they look to you, begging you to come and save them. But you can't move. As you watch this over and over and over again, you see a figure which is familiar to you, though you've never seen them in person. Large, golden armor slowly steps down from the sky. There, on their head, is nothing but a bright, glowing sun. You see the form of Pelor. As he kind of comes to rest on the top of your home. Though you can't see his face, as... You feel his gaze come upon you. 
and you feel nothing but disappointment and disdain looking at you. You are a failure, Finnick, you hear him say. You are unable to control your fear and unable to protect your friends. You are a liability to them and they would be better off without you. What do you want to do? I don't know. <laughs> As you sit there paralyzed with fear and shame, his the flames all around you glow brighter and brighter as his head begins to expand outwards, engulfing his body in light before engulfing everything in a fiery red light. And you wake up the next morning covered in sweat. The little bit of heat pushing from your skin. And Whisper's still in her bed. Do we get we'll get to that rest? in a minute. <laughs> Does anyone else want to do anything else in the night? Do we get a long rest? You get a long rest. Everyone gets a long rest. Okay. Yes, I would like to do something. Okay. Um, am I the only one who wants to do something in the night? Yep. You're good. Okay. Um... <laughs> I sleep my four or I sleep my four hours that I need for a long rest and then I'm gonna wake up I am going to cast pass without a trace on myself okay is Phoenix bag of holding in my room uh Phoenix would you have had it on your person when you came in here or would you have left it in your room I think I would have left it in my room. Okay. Well, I'm going to notice it's not in my room. Okay. And I'm going to sneak out of my room and try to sneak into Finnick's room. Okay. Go ahead and roll a stealth check for me. Finnick, roll a perception check at disadvantage. So 22. Okay. 15. Okay. Easy enough. You were able to sneak past Finnick's sleeping form, and you, as you sneak past her, you see that she is roiling in some sort of nightmare, but you are able to sneak past her without issue. I leave a piece of pocket pork belly near her bedroll okay. before I go out. Um, and then I want to sneak into her room and I want to go to the bag of holding. Okay. You, as you enter into her room, you see the bag of holding seated next to Phoenix's journal on her desk. I am going to try and grab the Knox blade. Okay. As you open the bag, reach your hand inside, and you call forth the Knox blade, pulling it out. It is still wrapped up in its little sheet, but it is in your hand currently. Do you touch the blade? Uh, yeah, I do. Okay. I grab it. As you slowly unwrap the blade, the Vanta black of its form on the table in front of you now, the little bit of smoke coming from the broken edge, you reach out and grab hold of the hilt, and instantly you feel cold. You feel cold sinking into your hand creeping its way up your arm, slowly but surely making its way upwards. I put on my cloak, mm -hmm. and I want to sneak out of okay. the house. With a 22, it is without issue. As you move through the house, 
knowing where the guards were posted out front, you were able to sneak out and make your way into the darkness. Do you you hold the blade for an hour to attune to it? Oh yeah, I'm carrying it, yeah. Okay. As you hold, keep holding the blade and you feel yourself attuning to it, the cold creeps up your arm more and more. Eventually it moves its way into your chest and you feel your heart rate slow down and eventually stop. You're fine otherwise, but you have now attuned to the death blade and as such are immune to the passage of time. And I keep going. Okay. So. Let's... As the next day arrives... Um, who would like to be the first to awake? I will. Okay, Clover. You awake, your sister lying in the bed with you. And kind of awake. And as you get up, you kind of rustle her and she wakes up as well. Oh, oh, oh at least uh, the night went, seemed to go all right. Yeah, um... I actually have something I have to do. Oh, okay. Can you cover for me? Yeah, where, uh... What do you want me to cover? I have to go to the jackal and I have to talk to somebody. Okay. Uh, I'll just tell him you went to go get some, uh... Some things for breakfast. That's a pretty good idea. Alright, well, get on out of here. I'll, uh... Make sure... There's no questions. I would like to go uh, have a speedy conversation with the, the guy whose name I can never remember. Okay. <laughs> is this going to be a private conversation? It usually is. Okay. <laughs> I will. Why stop now? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> if everyone can go ahead and uh, def deafen themselves. I'll deafen you, Donald. Don't worry. All right. So... As you make your way over to the jack the jumping jackal, following the usual path in, you make your way down into the familiar secret lair. And you find uh Hastings there. This is the only time I could come without it being like a thing. Kind of sits back a little bit in, in his familiar booth with a cup of coffee and he kind of lifts up his mask a little bit, giving you a vision of a uh, scarred and weathered lower half of his face and he kind of takes a sip. What's up, Clover? So you know my friend Whisper, right? Yeah. So she's being like falsely accused of killing her sister or her aunt or something. I haven't paid that much attention to it, honestly. Um, and now like her brother, who is some sort of like monster sometimes. He's got these big black guys. He sent two goons to break into my bedroom and they broke my desk. They broke my desk. Anyway, um, sent them into my room in the middle of the night to kidnap Clover. They said that they had a warrant, but I know that's not how warrants work. That was my bedroom. And anyway, so one of them had a gun and I didn't even know what a gun was until last night, but apparently it's this like long metal thing that shoots rocks really fast at you and it can kill you. So they had those. Um, and then her brother came swooping in on a wyvern and it was huge. I've never seen one up close that close before. Um, and, and yeah, they tried to kill us. I did a really good job fighting them off, but, but I might need some help in the future because because it's a lot, especially in the middle of the night. So, 
What are you coming here for exactly? Because we work together. Right. And you're but we're, we're not. Possessed. Right. But this is a two way relationship. Yeah. You got to do things for us too. Don't forget, Chloe. I wasn't going to do anything for you. You haven't asked me of anything in a while. And last time you asked me for something, I killed all the people you told me to kill. And I did most of it myself. And we appreciate that. Yeah. So what are you asking from us right now? Just to put a guard with you? Uh... No, I just want you to keep an eye out for some sleazy looking dude on a wyvern. And if he happens to come across your path, maybe you can try to kill him. Don't go out of your way. But you know. Please? I'll let you know if I see someone. And if the opportunity arrives, maybe we can take him out. But I'll let you know if that's going to cost when I see him. Well, I think I'm kind of bound to you for life ever since I got this tattoo. So I feel like you'll let me know what my life costs whenever you feel like. I'll let you know. Okay. Thank you for your time. Always a pleasure, Clover. All right. I'm going to leave there, and on my way home, I am going to stop by some, like, early open market. Everyone can join back in. I'm just going to do this until people join back in. Um, yeah, so I'm going to stop at the market, and I'll grab, I see some, like, sliced pig. I know I'm not going to eat that, but maybe other people like some sliced pig. Mm -hmm. Um, And some berries and leaves. Okay. Like, edibles. Leaves. Easy enough. Um, just mark off one gold just for everything as you get the pork belly and everything like that. Um, but uh, you eventually make your way back towards the home. The two guards that are posted out front kind of look at you as you approach and wonder how exactly it is you got out without telling them. Um, Good morning, Mr. Pig. Uh, as Clover is entering back into the residence, who is awoken up in this time period? Gormrog, okay. Finnick, okay. Tristan, you up to or no? Okay, so what are the three of, you, three of you doing as you arise in the morning? Uh, first, Donald, you're muted. <laughs> there we go. Uh, second, I'm going to be, you know, getting things ready to make breakfast. Only to, I guess, get interrupted by Aster. Um, she eventually makes her way... Uh, as you begin to cook, and she makes her way out into the the uh, kitchen area with the rest of you. Morning, everyone. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Can I get you something for breakfast? I was about to... Uh, uh, I cook everything for everybody, so I figured I might as well. Clover actually went to go grab some uh, ingredients this morning, so uh, she headed out a little early, so... Oh, well, we're doing all right on ingredients, but I, I guess I could wait. Um, I Clover, haven't come out of my room right. yet. Clover tends to be pretty creative when it comes to the, the ingredient side of things. So, um, yeah, I, I guess I'll wait and see what she comes up with. All right. How'd you sleep? Oh, I slept like a baby. Screaming and pooping your pants? Yeah, pretty much. Ooh, seems to be a theme here. Yeah. Finnegan's lame ass, too. <laughs> so, <laughs> as you all kind of putter about in the morning, Finnick, when would you like to make your entrance? Um, well, I wake up in my cold sweat. Yeah, not cold sweat. <laughs> um, I immediately scan the room. Do I see Whisper? You do not. You see a little piece of pork next to your head. <laughs> Fucking whisper. <sighs> Take a second. Just try to think this out. Maybe she's just out in the living room. So after a few minutes of, you know, cleaning the sweat off my face. I'll walk out. Okay. Uh, as you come out, you see the familiar faces of Gormrog, Tristan, and Aster. And as you 
also make your way. You hear the a small little bit of voices coming from outside the front door before Clover makes her way in as well. Coming. Hey, Where's good morning. Um, I know she was with you. And you just come out of her room? She wasn't there. There's just a little piece of pork next to my head. That sounds about right. I can't say that with a straight face. <laughs> Wait, did the whisper turn into a pig? Well, there's no pig tracks. Pig. What was that? I bought some sliced pig when I was out. Oh. Yeah, we could definitely do something with that. Maybe maybe bacon. And berries. Bacon and berries. What can I do with bacon? Ooh. Guys, I don't know where this for is. I'm sure she's around here. Maybe she's out in the chicken coop. Have you checked the chicken coop? No. I just, I'm worried. And then okay. I'll okay. form out and... Hey, uh, Aster? Yeah. I, I don't know. Press the digitation from portals. Uh, are you able to send a message magically? No. Cool. All right. Never mind. All right. Happy to help. Uh,. Clover, I'll, I'll take those off your hands and I'll start preparing breakfast. Maybe the smell of bacon will, will draw her in from wherever she is. That usually works. And I got some lettuce. That's for me because I'm not I don't eat, I don't eat I don't eat the pig. Right, I know. I remember. I'll make sure to have some belly berries in uh what a salad. Okay, I could mix you up some greens and, and add a little bit of color in there, so I think we still have some peppers left over from when you last went into your garden. Um, we, we can mix it up. Okay. I'm in the going outside looking everywhere for whisper. Okay. Uh, roll the perception check for me. While she's doing that, I'm going to go outside and post up like by where the where guards are standing. I'm just going to get my seat and just start playing. Okay. I love that. Yeah. What'd you say? What'd you say, Whisper? What time of day is it? Um, I figure everyone's gotten up around nine ish, considering how chaotic the night was. So you've been traveling for probably five hours now. Hmm. Well. I got If there's anything you'd like to do in that time, let me know. Yes. Okay, what do yes. you want to do? All right. Um I wouldn't have left the city immediately, but I would have waited until a little before midday. And I wanted to go to the center of the city or a place where from the center of the city you could see the sky. How is the weather? Uh, today, it's a little bit of uh, cloud cover, but it doesn't look like it's going to storm or anything. It's just is it cloudy. like windy at all? Yeah, there's a little bit of wind coming in from the uh, the west. Okay, well, I'm going to try it anyways. I'm going to cast Skyrite. Okay. And I want it to say, Tell Belen Whisper is coming. Okay. Uh, Finnick, being outside during, like, it's around this time, right? You're doing it around this time? Mm -hmm. Okay, Finnick, go ahead and roll a perception check for me. I did, I got an 18. Okay, uh, you see Tell Bell and Whisper is coming in the sky above you. Forming in the clouds. Shit, 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 shit. <sighs> um, I'm sorry. You want to see that? Uh, what's, roll a perception check for me. Because you guys aren't outside, you probably would have heard me yelling, right. but yeah. um, I'm going to cast ending. Uh -huh. To whisper. <laughs> Hold on, gotta get the fingers ready. <laughs> whisper, where are you going? We can help you. 
please don't get yourself killed. Please reply to this message. <laughs> I miss you. Um, please. <laughs> you hear back. I'm going home. I don't want to put anyone in danger because of me anymore. I'm going to deal with this. I'm going to send another sending. <laughs> because my... It's fine. You don't have to do this alone. Please let us help you. Whisper, you could get yourself killed. Please. I'm begging you. Come home, please. Can I ask for a check? Go ahead. A persuasion check? Go ahead. Roll I'm a persuasion check, Finnick. Okay. Okay. What would I roll and like contest to that? Uh... Fortitude wisdom? save. You want to roll a wisdom <laughs> check? Okay. What'd you roll, Finnick? Got an 18. Uh. Let me try first. But if it gets hard, I'll run away. At this point, have Clover and Gormorog reached Finnick? Like, after hearing her screams? Um... I, I, I presume that I would have directly right. ran right out. Yeah, I would say... I wouldn't have. I would say, Clover, you can make your way outside as, uh, and join Finnick as she's sending in the field in the yard behind your house. I end my message with I'm sorry. I didn't forget to tell her that we made her bacon! She's gonna try and take Belle and herself. I've been here! You didn't say anything about bacon at all. What does she have to come back for? I mean, I would hope we would mean more to her than some bacon. I don't think she's so Okay, well, can you tell where the sky message came from? I made like an intelligence check or something. What's or the is it just... What's the question? I'm sorry. Like, trying to see where the sky rate came from. It doesn't come from, like, she doesn't send up something and it affects it. Okay. It's, it's just a, the clouds shift to form that message. So it's not something you'd be able to see. Shit. You need to relax. I know we had a rough night, but listen. So she's going back to her home. Right? Yes. Okay. As far as I'm aware. Breakfast, and then we'll go to her home. And eventually we'll get there. Before her, after her, at the same time as her, I don't know. But we don't have anything else to do right now, and that's where she's going, so that should be where we're going. Why are you not more worried about this? I'm worried, but shaking my head and, like, slapping my face with my hands isn't going to make it any better. Somebody has to stay calm. I... We can leave after breakfast. No, walk inside. Okay. 
As she walks inside, she will see that there are two packages uh, waiting by the door in either one of my hands. One with a few leaves sticking out for Clover. One neatly wrapped for Fennec. I said, we can eat on the way. I'm not hungry. Then you can hold on to it to give to her. I'll give Clover a little salad in a bowl with a little wrapping over it. Um, and as we go, I'm just going to put on my backpack and sword, whatever else. Okay. As you all gather yourselves to get ready to head out, um, whisper. As you make your way out of the gates, on the north side of Western, getting ready to begin your trek to Leeringorn, one you've taken before in the opposite direction. What would you like to do? I want to veer off the path into the woods. Um, and I want to pull out the last of my pocket pork belly okay. from the day before. Um, and she's gonna look up. Talon! Wave the pork belly in the air. Okay. Go ahead and roll an animal handling trick for me. An advantage, because that's some damn good pork belly. <laughs> I got a seven. Uh, add advantage or no? Yeah. Because <laughs> I got a seventeen on my first roll. Okay. <laughs> As you call for Talon, holding up the pork belly, you wait a minute, two minutes. You start to lose Talon. hope that maybe he's not in the area. Before you start to hear leaves rustling in the trees in front of you. You hear the sound of claws scraping against bark. Eventually, <laughs> busting through the tree line in front of you, <laughs> slamming down into the ground in front of you, its claws raking deep gashes into the floor. <laughs> Instantly takes the meat out of your hand. <laughs> Speak with animal. Okay. Um, Talon, you came! You called me. Well, I called you before and you didn't come last time. Did you call me loud enough? Maybe that was it. I thought maybe you were off hunting or something. I mean, I do that sometimes. How are, how are you doing? I'm okay. How are you? Not great. Oh. Um, my brother tried to kill me. His head against you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Why did your brother try to kill you? They think I killed my aunt. It's all very confusing. But now I'm going to kill him. But now I'm scared because my friends, I left them behind. And I just didn't want them to get hurt anymore. And uh, they miss me and they want me back. But I don't want to put them in danger anymore because we already just all got hurt. And... I'm just not good to be around for my friends right now. Sorry, that was a lot. Um, well, I'm your friend, right? Yeah, you came. Thank Can you. Can I be around? By the way. I yeah. I want you out here by yourself. Do you, do you want to go on an adventure with me? Yeah. Okay. That would be great. I don't want to be alone. Well, I won't leave you alone, Whisper. Thank you. Uh, that's the last of my pork belly, though. Oh. We, we're going to have to hunt for more food. I should have well, thought about bringing food. Well, we can... We'll find something along the way, I'm sure. I'm a really good hunter. 
awesome. I can't wait to see it. All right. I won't be able to talk to you like this for much longer, though. That's okay. Cool. I know what you mean, even when I don't understand what you say. You're awesome, Fallon. I, I'm doing my best out here. <laughs> well, I'm happy you're okay. I'm happy you're okay, too. Oh, I'm going to give him a hug. <laughs> Okay. So, as the spell fades, what would you like to do? I am going to sit for a second and keep looking towards where the street is uh, before slowly getting up and starting to walk north, but I'm purposely walking slowly. Okay. Um, as you get up to get ready to walk, you see Talon kind of motion down so you can get on his back. Really? <laughs> I get on Talon's back. But don't don't go too fast. I don't want anyone to see us. As you begin to make your way forward, the rest of you, what are you guys doing? What's your plan? I was still in front of the house waiting to see. Yeah, if I... uh, just everyone gathered you as this whole happened. Oh, okay. Um, sir, are you coming with us, or are you gonna? Do you have things to do? I have things to do. Uh, I've got to uh, make my way back to Keyleth. Okay. She kind of hugs you and kisses you on the cheek. Be careful, all right? Yeah, of course. You be careful and, um, you know, keep, keep in touch and come back soon and all that. Will do. Um, I'm going to grab a, a slip of paper and a, something to write with, scribble something really quickly. And, and as we head out, um, just find a courier, um, and hand it off to them. Okay. I'm also, um, presuming that we're taking the cart, right? That's probably a good idea, yeah. We have a cart and horses. Okay, so... Taking a few moments to get your horse hitched to the cart, you all gather together with your gear and begin to head out, dropping off whatever it is you have to drop off for the courier. I have a question for Whisper. Did you... when? You took off the the cape. Were you already away from the house? Or did you leave the cape in Phoenix room? Uh, I have it on me. Yeah. Okay. Grab bag of holding, grab my journal, grab my other gear and Get going. Okay. Uh, Does anyone know exactly like where we're going? Well, I'm assuming Laren going. Yeah, he's the first rider of Laren going. Oh yeah, I just meant like, do you know how to get there? Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Uh, I've never really been anywhere, so I'm trusting you. I know exactly where. Laringorn is because while at the library I definitely absolutely saw a map and while the guy who is puppeteering everything I say and do has no clue whatsoever uh, I at Gormrock definitely definitely know don't we have a map? yeah yeah somewhere it's probably in the bag of holding 
Who's got that? <laughs> so as soon as we get in the cart, I, I'll sit up front and sort of have the map out. So, you all load up into the cart. Finnick, go ahead and roll a survival check for me. I'm going to say it with advantage because you do have the map. Okay. Uh, that's a 14. Okay. Um, you know Liringorn is kind of northwest from your location up into the mountains in the north. Mm -hmm. um, you see it on the map. It's easy enough for you to find. Um, and you direct Gormrog to start heading in that direction. And as we begin this trek into the unknown, we are take our break for the night. Um, thanks everyone who's joined us so far and hanging out. Uh, we'll be back in probably 10, 15 minutes. See you guys soon. I'm Jacqueline Wilmot, Director of Volunteer and Community Engagement at the Phoenix. We're on a mission to help as many people as we can. I'm blown away, honestly, by the impact our volunteers are having across the country. The Phoenix is yoga, it's art, it's hiking, it's music. So there's a lot of really exciting things happening at the Phoenix. Now, because of our virtual volunteer platform, we can take Phoenix anywhere. All they have to do is pick up that volunteer flag and it started. The people, they tend to come to the Phoenix because they get something out of it, you know? There's something genuine about that. And then, you know, along the way, they realize I can give back. What's so unique about volunteering with the Phoenix is that you can just come as you are and we will give you the, the tools and the training to be successful. I became a volunteer with the Phoenix so that I could give back, even if it's just a little bit of what they've given me. One of my most favorite things about volunteering is meeting people, connecting. I've made friends that I will have for a lifetime. So it's been a dream of mine to be able to bring fitness or physical activities um, to the sober community here in Long Beach. And so to hear that the Phoenix was already here and doing that was super exciting for me. My service to others has been like played a major role in my personal recovery. So I like that the Phoenix lets me combine an activity and some service. I also really like riding my bike, so hand in hand, they go together. Oh, um, I love the Phoenix. I don't know. It's just. The classes have um, really helped me come out of my shell a little bit. I have my confidence back, which I didn't have even though I got clean from drugs and alcohol. I feel like my life is taking off and everybody at the Phoenix is helping me do that. Once Phoenix has helped you rise from the ashes, there's this sort of natural response where you want to do that for other people. And, and the beauty of that is as soon as they find that strength and fortitude in their recovery, they're reaching back for the next person. And if we did that across the country, imagine how many lives could be touched. So join us in this movement. Whether you are in recovery or an ally, you have something special to offer. Whether you are looking to lead events or support events, you already have everything you need to bring the Phoenix alive in your community. Get started today. We can't wait to make a difference alongside you.
Jacqueline Wilmot, Director of Volunteer and Community Engagement at the Phoenix. We're on a mission to help as many people as we can. I'm blown away, honestly, by the impact our volunteers are having across the country. The Phoenix is yoga, it's art, it's hiking, it's music. So there's a lot of really exciting things happening at the Phoenix. Now, because of our virtual volunteer platform, we can take Phoenix anywhere. All they have to do is pick up that volunteer flag and it's started. The people, they tend to come to the Phoenix because they get something out of it, you know? There's something genuine about that. And then, you know, along the way, they realize I can give back. What's so unique about volunteering with the Phoenix is that you can just come as you are and we will give you the, the tools and the training to be successful. I became a volunteer with the Phoenix so that I could give back, even if it's just a little bit of what they've given me. It's one of my most favorite things about volunteering is meeting people, connecting. I've made friends that I will have for a lifetime. So it's been a dream of mine to be able to bring fitness or physical activities um, to the sober community here in Long Beach. And so to hear that the Phoenix was already here and doing that was super exciting for me. My service to others has been like played a major role in my personal recovery. So I like that the Phoenix lets me combine an activity and some service. I also really like riding my bike. So hand in hand, they go together. Um, I love the Phoenix. I don't know. It's just. The classes have um, really helped me come out of my shell a little bit. I have my confidence back, which I didn't have even though I got clean from drugs and alcohol. I feel like my life is taking off and everybody at the Phoenix is helping me do that. Once Phoenix has helped you rise from the ashes, there's this sort of natural response where you want to do that for other people. And, and the beauty of that is as soon as they find that strength and fortitude in their recovery, they're reaching back for the next person. And if we did that across the country, imagine how many lives could be touched. So join us in this movement. Whether you are in recovery or an ally, you have something special to offer. Whether you are looking to lead events or support events, you already have everything you need to bring the Phoenix alive in your community. Get started today. We can't wait to make a difference alongside you. together and make their way northwards in an attempt to track down their wayward friend, Whisper. Whisper. Hmm. You make your way, skirting the edge of the Bramblewood Forest. And even in this space, it's well shaded enough. Um, Go ahead and roll a survival check for me. 
just to see how fast you can move through. Thirteen. Okay. So, riding on Talon, you kind of like leaping over <laughs> some of the uh, the logs that lay on the a ground in front of you. He looks back towards you and then tilts his head up to the sky and flares his wings out and gives him a little puff waiting for the answer. Not yet. Not till we're a little further. He tucks his back. Tucks his wings back, pressing your legs against his sides. <laughs> and kind of trugs through again a little bit more. Uh, roll a perception check for me. Mm-hmm. Ooh, that's a nine. Okay. Keep an eye out, looking around. You look back. You don't see anyone making their way from the city towards your position yet. But um, as you mm-hmm. sit there riding along, suddenly you feel something shoot out and wrap around your back. Uh, that's a 18 to hit. Mm-hmm. Make sure. Uh, that hits, yes. Okay. Okay. Um, as you feel this uh, tendril kind of slap across your back, uh, go ahead and roll a. Uh, actually, disregard. Don't roll anything. Um, you take five piercing damage, and you are restrained. You cannot breathe or speak as you feel this tendril pull up around your throat and try to pull you up into the trees. As as, uh, this happens, you pull up and you look to see this thin, long-armed creature. The arms, like this uh, long, thin arms that come to these wide hands that you, as you look at it, they're just five fingered but the entirety of its palm have spikes on every square inch of it you see its other two legs wrapped around the trunk of the tree the its open ha- uh, the openness of it gripped into the tree and you get the sense that it has the same spikes on its feet this opens its mouth as just rows of teeth inside of its mouth it begins to pull you up into the tree uh, and as you're pulled up, you see another one of the creatures in the, an adjacent tree, and it's going to lash out two times at you. Uh, that is a uh, 14 to hit. Mm-hmm, that hits. And a 7 to hit. Does not hit. So the second one is going to do 6 piercing damage. Alright, alright, alright. Uh, I'm sorry. You you can speak and you uh, and breathe. It wasn't a critical. It's only on criticals. My apologies. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, but the other one lashes out at you and slams into your side and begins to try and grab grapple you as well. Uh, that is going to end their turn, and I need you to go ahead and roll for initiative. That's two. Okay. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll for uh, Talon. Okay. What do, do I add any? I'm getting it up right him? now. Okay. Uh, plus two. Eighteen. Okay. So Talon is going to go first. <laughs> uh, I'm going to send you a Griffin stat sheet so you can control Talon, okay? Mm Mm-hmm. I 
put it up in the chat room. You get it? Mm. Where is it? It's in the, the voice chat uh, text box. Okay. Yeah. Opening it now. Alrighty. Uh, and he goes first? Yes. And he is going to go to the one that hit me first and try to beak attack. Okay, go ahead and roll your attack. Twenty three. That definitely hits. Six piercing damage. Okay. So Talon jumps up, flapping his wings, comes into the trees and just scratches down across one of the, the creature's faces and gashes across and you see it hiss and try to pull you back up into its form and escape with you. Uh, um, Talon's going to no, use his claws and multi okay. attack. Go ahead and roll uh, another attack. That's a 21. That definitely hits. Fourteen points of slashing damage. Okay, so with the next slash, seeing this creature try and pull you away, Talon just reaches across and slashes down into its neck and just rips open a, a giant gash in the creature's throat and you see it try to bring its hand up to stop the blood but eventually its grip slackens on you and you kind of swing towards the other tree as the other one pulls you closer but the creature slumps down and <laughs> flumps out of the, the tree uh, that is going to end Griffin uh, Talon's turn uh, mm -hmm. the first creature is dead the second one is going to go ahead and make uh, its gonna go ahead and make two attacks against you that is a 17 to hit Hits. and a 18 to hit hit all right so you take an additional four piercing and five piercing damage okay. uh, and the creature is going to try and pull you. Moving at half speed, it's going to try and pull you deeper into the forest. Uh, and it only gets to move 15 feet, uh, but uh, Talon can go ahead and make an attack of opportunity. Yeah, he is. He's going to go and claw that. Twenty-two to hit. That definitely hits. Eleven points of slashing damage. Ooh, Talon gets a good slash across this creature's chest, and it pulses blood out. But it, it's still uh, up, and it's trying to pull you closer to its body. Uh, your turn. Uh, am I restrained? You are grappled. Okay. Am I able to move my arms? Yes. Okay. Um, well, did I... I uh, hmm? No, did I say grappled or restrained? I don't know. You are restrained. Okay. I'm going to cast Primal Savagery and try to scratch my way out. Okay, go ahead and, and roll bite, your attack. Scratch and bite my way out. You, uh, it's a disadvantage because you are restrained. Okay, well, my first one was 23. 18. That'll hit. Okay. How do you want to do this? You don't even have to roll dice. He's got okay. two hit points left. <laughs> I'm going to Wolverine slash my way out. Okay. You uh, just annoyed at this whole situation. You feel that rage fill up inside you, and you bring up your clothes and just slash down across the spindly arms of this creature. 
acid tearing into it. It screeches as its arms just burn off of its body, and eventually it falls down to the ground. Uh, you do fall from the top of the tree. It's only 10 feet, uh, mm-hmm. so go ahead and roll a dexterity saving throw. Ten. Okay, you fall prone, <laughs> <laughs> and you take uh, six bludgeoning damage. <laughs> but you uh, you are conscious, prone on the floor in the forest as Talon hops down to land next to you. Kind of nuzzles into your wounds. Ow. Thanks, Talon. What the fuck was that? (sighs) Kind of growls at the creature. (laughs) Does the creature look tasty? It does Mm -hmm. not. It looks Uh. disgusting. Uh, Green skin. Uh, um, turn to Talon and be like, "That hurt. I think I need to take a take a break. Can we can we uh make a little shelter here?" Kind of looks around for a second, spreads his wings and lifts off and tries, starts to like break branches off of trees with its beak. Oh, you're so the best. <laughs> but uh, okay, eventually you try. are able to kind of assemble a small makeshift shelter for yourself. Okay. I'm gonna try and take a short rest. Okay. As you bet in for the hour, the rest of you, what's the plan? I'll keep an eye out the window of the cart while we're moving. Okay. Um, all right, you taking the road, begin to make your way up. The, uh, the Black Valley path. And uh, coming up, you see the offshoot for the Torchwood Way, which will lead you more eastbound. Um, go ahead and roll a perception check for me, Clover. Nice. Uh, 26. Okay. You keeping an eye out, you you do notice signs of something large kind of making its way through the uh, the Bramblewood just off the road. Um, so you, you do notice that. Okay. Okay. So are we... So... Are we in the path alongside that wood? Yes. I'm actually not going to say anything, and I'm just going to watch the shadows in the woods until we are no longer moving together. There's no shadows following you. You see a path. No, I know, I know. I I see something. I called it shadows. I see something in the woods. Something, a large creature, right? No, no, no. You see a pathway that has been... You you notice a path through the woods made by a large creature. You don't see the, any creature or anything. Oh, a path made by a large creature. Oh, okay. In that case, I will tell everybody. I thought I saw the creature. Okay. Hey, Gormorog, look. Mm. I'm going to... Freeze. Point. Yeah, it's a forest. So, no, look closer. At the ground, there's giant footprints. I'm going to take a closer look. Okay. You hop off the cart and make your way over. Um, you can go ahead and roll either a survival or an investigation check for me. Ah, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve. Okay. Um, survival. It's easy enough to... You know, kind of track them, but 
I'm gonna say you're not familiar with what kind of marks these are. They almost have like a, a three clawed step followed by like this almost like a more feline step behind it. Look, I'm gonna say I I, I just see random talent, wildlife talents. Just I'm not sure what it is. There's something out there though. Don't know what it is. It's a good idea to call Talon. Maybe he'll know where Whisper is. You think he's still out here? Last time she called him, he didn't respond, so I have no idea. You want to give it a try? Charisma check for me to see how loud you are. <laughs> this is really freaking good. Um, charisma is plus two. 21. Whisper. Mm -hmm. You hear a familiar voice shouting out Talon's name. Uh, uh, does per Talon react? His head kind of pops up and looks towards you and then looks back towards the sound of the voice. Can I tell how far away they are? Um, roll an investigation check. Definitely not my best. That's an eight. Uh, it doesn't sound close. Hmm. Close enough for you to hear, but how far out that is, you don't know. I'm going to turn to Talon. Even though I'm not casting speak of animals, I'm going to be like, Talon, I don't know what to do. Oh. Uh, I'm... They're looking for me, but the more they're around me, the more they're in danger. I still need a little bit of rest. Kind of uh, moves his, shifts his body so you can get on his back again. Maybe, maybe if we stay here, they, they won't find me. Kind of hun hunches down in front of you now, tucks mm -hmm. his wings up tight. Yeah. That, I think that's what I'm going to do right now. And I'll decide what to do if they find me. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll a stealth check for both you and Griffin. And uh, Talon. Mm -hmm. My stealth is three. <laughs> uh, because I don't know. Fourteen. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, what are you guys doing? You see the tracks? What's the plan? Um, after Clover calls out, I'm just listening to see if I hear anything. Okay. Um, see anything. A few moments pass, and you, there's no response that you get from from anything. I don't know that he's still out here. He could be he on might the... have... Be on the other yeah. side. Yeah. Yeah. And he might have moved on. And for all we know, these could be wyvern traps. <laughs> I mean, maybe, maybe we do know that they're not, but they... It could be anything. Can you get back in the cart? Or... Yeah. Yeah. All right. You all load back in the cart and continue to head north. Uh, how fast are you guys going? Mm, a steady pace. Not not charging, but not going slow. Go ahead and someone, uh, Clover, I'm assuming, keep uh, roll another perception check for this part. 19. I need you to... Okay. 
as you begin to continue the way, about another 30 minutes pass, and keeping an eye on that trail, you see uh, a few pieces of tree branches have kind of been snapped off and laid in this little like lean-to area, and you see the flayed bodies of these two long-armed creatures. Uh, Finnick, as you see these creatures, roll a wisdom saving throw. A wisdom saving throw? Oh no. Oh, no. Um, what's a seven? You see these creatures and instantly uh, begin to have flashbacks from a previous time you were on a mission and these creatures are aberrants called chokers and you fall into catatonic shock at the sight of them. Bitch. <laughs> Take a traumatized character, they said. It'll be fun, <laughs> they said. <laughs> Clover, um, as you're scanning, you see that little bit of lean-to, and then you see the bright red hair of your friend hiding, trying to... She has, like, her hands up by her face. Like, if you can't... If I can't see you, you can't see me. <laughs> And then you see the large form of Talon kind of like scrooch down behind the, the the plants trying to cover himself as best he can. Um, but I also noticed that CC has fall shit. That Finnick has fallen into shock, right? Yes. Okay. Finnick! Finnick, are you okay? Oh, okay. Yeah. What happened? I've seen those things before. Chokers. I'm sorry that Amy, it, that happened to you? It was not a fun time, but they were dealt with. Well, these ones are dead, so they're not going to hurt you. Right. Yes. I think I know. Oh, they're dead. And, um, <laughs> Olivia's going to hop out of the cart and she's going to cover her face like this. <laughs> and she's going to, she's going to walk towards Clover and then just sit directly in front of her, <laughs> in front of her face. Peekaboo! <laughs> Clover! Is that really you? What you doing? Um, Whisper is I... bleeding profusely from some <laughs> from several holes that have been punched into her body. I'm going to say what you doing as I cast a healing word on her. <laughs> Which gives her seven healing points. Nice. Okay. Uh, uh, I can't decide if I'm mad or at you or if I'm happy right now, and I'm really confused. Um, How far away is this from the cart? Um, maybe what, fifty feet from the road? I'll have pulled the cart off to the side, right, and stopped it. Um. And I'll have motion to Tristan to follow um, Clover. As uh, Clover, as you make your way over and begin to have the conversation with Whisper, you see Talon kind of like start to scooch closer to you guys, thinking he's still invisible. And then <laughs> as he kind of sits, pauses for a moment before fl flaring his wings out, rah, trying to scare you. <laughs> Does it work? I don't do you. Does it work? You seem coming, so. Alan, <laughs> 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 it's okay. It's okay. These are my friends. Remember? He snuggles you, Clover. Uh, well, are you mad or are you confused? All of the things. All of the things. Because I didn't want you to be in danger, but I, I also 
I'm happy you're here. I don't think we're any safer at the house that they just attacked. They're... He was after me, though. So if I left and I told him I was coming for him, he wouldn't go back to the house because I wouldn't be there. That's true. Well, if it makes you feel any better, we, you're not allowed in the cart and you have to walk the rest of the way. That's okay. I got talent. No. No. Yeah, I understand why you'd go off because... I feel that way sometimes, too, but we're friends now, and if I die, that was my choice, not yours. Mm. Great at inspirational talks. <laughs> <laughs> Is everyone here? How close am I after Gorog sent me to go walk that way? How close do you want to get? I want to get as close, but I want to walk like lightly inconspicuous, but I want, I'm not being stealthy, but I'm also not rushing to get there. Okay. <laughs> get however close you want, pal. <laughs> as, clo as close as they can see me, but I'm going to go up, post next, up, the, up next to a tree and not be a part of the conversation. Okay. Well, what about if we follow you from a distance and we just stay in the background in case you need us? That way you can do everything that you need to do for yourself. Um, I, I still feel bad. I don't know if... I mean, this is my problem, right? Oh, it's our problem. Mm -hmm. You're one of us. We made up a team name and wrote mm -hmm. it on a piece of paper and then I got paid for it. And so you, I've got a friendship bracelet. You. And you have a friendship bracelet. And we have sliced pig in the cart. I'm so hungry. There's like a lot of sliced pig I, in the cart. I finished my pocket pork belly. Oh. Burma made it, so it's pretty good. <laughs> we can talk about it in the cart. <laughs> okay. I'll just share to tell and to follow. Oh, 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 oh. You all begin to make your way to the cart, Gormrog, seeing <clears throat> this, your reunited friend with, with them, the large talon kind of following behind. A little pep in his step as he's been reunited with those other friends. And sheepish, sheepishly walk up to Gormrog. Hmm. I'm sorry. I'm like under my breath. I'm going to be like, I'm sorry, but can I have something? I'm going to reach into my bag. I'm going to say, but you think just because you ran away, because you abandoned us, because you decide you're no longer going to have us with you, that suddenly you could just come back and expect food and love and compassion and forgiveness because that is exactly you. right oh <laughs> and i'm gonna hand you a package with your name on it whisper is confused and it's gonna be filled with <laughs> meat that has been salted and preserved her eyes start to water up as uh as you hand that over talon's head kind of like just comes up right next to yours whisper <laughs> Looks down at the food and looks back at you and looks down at the food and looks up at you. Yes, yes, you're gonna get some. <laughs> so, um, as everyone gathers, when they're all together, I'm going to. Are we all? Are you guys all in the cart? I'm in the cart. As I go in, I'm going to. I'm going to be lightly following behind, and before I go in, I'm going to take the overcoat that I normally wear that covers my scales, keep the vest on, but I haven't pulled scales in a, a little while, so there are some that are growing and staying there and shining, and I'm going to take that overcoat and leave it on the ground before I get in the cart, and I'm going to sit in the cart 
and I'm gonna pull my flute out, but I'm not gonna start playing it. But I'm going to just sit back and fiddle with it as if I'm trying to do something with it, even though I'm not really doing anything with it. But I'm gonna play it at some point, but I'm just looking at it like I'm trying to do something with it as we're writing. Okay. Whisper, I was worried sick. I I left you some food because it looked like you were having a bad dream. And I didn't think to write a note at the time, but I probably should have done that. That would be appreciated. I just, I just, I felt so bad yesterday. Our house is ruined and we all got hurt and it was all because of me. It's not your fault. But it is. He's the one who chose to come after you. It's him being a dickwad. <laughs> with an he ego bigger than a mon. He is a dickwad. That's, that's a good term for him. It's a very, very evocative term. <laughs> Haven't really heard that one before, <laughs> but uh, very apt for uh, the bell end. <laughs> uh, thank you for this food and for for coming after me. I I think I was purposely walking a little bit slow because I was hoping you'd catch up, but at the same time, I I just don't want you all to get hurt because of him anymore. Trust me. If it was Clover that would have ran off, Tristan, Gormog, me, I'm pretty sure we would have had the same response. I would have ran after them too, yeah. Because we're friends. We're a team. You don't have to face any challenge alone. Yeah, I didn't do so well in that last one. Well, they're dead. That's yeah, valid. um... <laughs> what exactly are those things? They don't... They don't look normal. They don't look tasty, either. They're chokers. They're known for having effects on the mind if they get about, about enough of a hit. So would I know if those are normally seen around here? Uh, go ahead and roll a nature check. Nature. And um, can Donald also make one of those checks? Because <laughs> that's a three. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Oop. They fell on the floor. Roll, roll again? Or yeah. Watch, look at it. Roll it again. <laughs> Petrified with the decision. <laughs> Swear to God, natural one. Okay. You got no idea, guys. <laughs> yeah, no, those don't belong out here right. in these woods. Question. Would I know where they're most commonly found? Go ahead and roll a nature check for me. <laughs> at advantage, because of your history and dealing with these. <laughs> Cool. That was a 19 and a natural 20. Okay. Um, Fuck you. They can be found... You have no idea either. They can be found in dark spaces. Um, it's not... It's rare for them to be this close to, like, a, a road. But it's not unusual for them to be in a dark forest. Though they are rare still there. Okay. I'll relay that information. Hmm. Um, can I peer into the forest to see if there are any more of them? Go ahead and roll a perception check for me. Um, 24. Uh, okay. Uh, as you scan in and kind of like motion your eyes across the space, you don't notice anything creeping through the, the woods towards you or anything slinking along. See a few birds, but nothing, nothing, uh, that would, that looks like this. Okay, well, I don't see anything else 
crazy looking mm -hmm. right now, so we might be good to proceed for a little while. Is this what we want to do? I don't... Mm. Hell yeah! They broke my desk! They did. They broke our house. I, I tried to put it back together. You did a great job, Finnick. I really appreciate it. Carpentry isn't really my thing. <laughs> well, you did better than I could have done. I was just complaining about it all night. Sure. So I haven't moved to the cart at all. Um, uh, I'm just watching Whisper and waiting for a decision from her. I'm... What about the other stuff that, that was going on? Like, like that 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 pretty pretty druid person was talking about my sister no, the the big the voice one the voice of the tempest yeah yeah that one mm -hmm. you remember there, there was other problems yeah yeah are we sure that this is the thing that we want to do yeah. What do you want to do, Whisper? Do you want to take care of this? If it's he's still gonna be a problem because he's still out there. Yes, I just don't know if I don't think I acted very smartly, and I don't know now that I'm thinking about it, considering these two things just messed me up. If I'm strong enough. We can get stronger with time. And when you're ready, we can jump on it. But I also don't want to be mm -hmm. like looking over my shoulder every day thinking or looking up in the sky and looking for him. As you say that. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you hear the light fluttering of small wings and you f hear something land on this one of the benches in the cart you don't see anything but you hear something land there it's, you hear tiny claws kind of scratch against the wood and then in that space you see a form appear you see a beautiful woman. Long, <laughs> black hair, dark, piercing eyes, this beautiful, fair skin. Dressed in this, the purple and gold robes of Leeringorn. And she kind of folds her hands across her lap and looks to you, Whisper, as you gaze back at your sister, Dale. Well, I've heard you met Bellin. Why don't you come find me, Whisper? That's uh, what you go by now, right? What do you want? What do you think I want, Lilaren? Fifth. What do you think I want? I, I don't know. It seems like you have power now. What more could you want from me? You have things to pay for, Fifth. The rest He's of He's in the wagon part of this? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm mm-hmm. We all see it? Yeah. Kristen, throw her out. It's, it's a, I stop my flute and I see that. How close is she to me? Like I'm sitting down or that the image. Maybe 10 from feet me. from you. 10 feet. All right. So I, I quickly just, as soon as I see that, put my flute away and pull not my sword, but my dagger. And my eyes go reptilian and I go there and, and I can attack roll for me. No, uh, I was gonna attack. I was looking. I was gonna look 
in her direction like I'm going to, but not. He okay. wants to intimidate her. Okay, go yes. ahead and roll an intimidation check. Um, the rest of you, this really doesn't concern you, so unless well, it does. Well, she might be your fifth, but she's our first, first best friend. That's that's cute. Um, yeah, it is. Well, you don't know who she is. This failure of a human or elf rather you're a failure that's not nice unable to do anything for herself constantly failing at everything she does even the servants were better at things than her she's done amazing things i'm sure and you're amazing making at failing false accusations well i bet it was you who killed your aunt and now you're trying to blame it on whisper because you're jealous of her Oh, yes. I'm jealous of you, right, Fifth? Is that what it is? Is that what you told them? Get out. I want to attack. Go ahead and roll an oh. attack. Oh, well, then my rolls do matter then. <laughs> Primal savagery. Okay. 14. You reach forward and she kind of just moves slightly out of the way as your claws emanate that acidly touch that she is familiar with. She kind of looks at your hand as it swipes past her form. There you are. This is what she is. Just a f useless, angry elf. Shut your fucking mouth. <laughs> I'm going to be... How close am I from my... I would have stabbed you the second that I saw you, so... I don't know exactly what point you're trying to make here, but I agree with her. Oh, good. Let's let's see what you all can do. I'll wait. I'll just sit here and wait. Uh, well, while she's waiting, she's getting two darts thrown at her. Go ahead and roll your tax. Well, and really uh, that when I go when in for my go my lunch, I'm going to get as close as I possibly can to her with that without attacking. Okay, go ahead and roll attack. Well, go ahead and roll. I rolled 18 for my intimidation check. Go ahead. What'd you roll for intimidation? 18. Okay. Doesn't give a fuck. Okay. But I'm not going to attack. I'm going to get as close as I can to try that to be super close. Yeah. Yeah. What'd you roll? Um, 23 and a natural 20. Okay. Uh, seeing you kind of get angry and move towards her, she watches you. And as you throw the two daggers, she just kind of moves slightly out of the way of each one. Uh, with each one, I'm I'm saying like, get out. I would like. Oh. Go ahead, Clover. I would like to press to digitate the tears, like her the eye eye water, her eye water. I would like to press to digitate that really, 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 really fucking hot. Okay. Uh, you I'll cast the out. form. You cast towards the her her face, and you don't feel anything, any connection. She's not even here, is she? I don't think so. You don't I'm in her know. face with fangs out and eyes. One and day, my scale, the fifth know, will Man, she called you scar a loser you she too. She scared to actually show up. I didn't hear a single goddamn thing you said. One day, the fifth will scar you too. She can't control herself. It's what she does. Fails everyone around her. Fails everything she does. Right, fifth? That's what you do. Oh you God. lash out, right? You sound again. like the most annoying person I've ever met in my life. She's more <laughs> annoying than Brooke Fulbridge. Kind of stands up and starts to move towards you, Whisper. I like Wendy better than oh. this chick. I will stand between her and Whisper. She just moves through your form. Then I will just hold on. I will reach back and just grab onto Whisper's, like, wrist. Hopefully in a comforting way, but... <laughs> As you do that, Whisper, she raises her hand up towards your face to kind of just brush against your cheek. And as she does, you see her hand begin to deteriorate. You see flesh peel back, revealing muscle and bone. You see this decrepit, burnt, acidy burnt hand rub a, move to rub against your cheek and then she disappears. 
I'll be seeing you, fifth. You hear a light fluttering of wings. Whisper is shaking. So, um, I know you said you didn't murder your aunt. How do you feel about murdering the rest of them? Because I'm kind of on that track right now. Burn them all. Let's go. Yeah. Fang sticking out of my face. <laughs> well, we just saw how strong that one is. It wasn't her, it was her spirit. It, yeah. She was able to do that. Okay. As you all can mm -hmm. trek north. Day begins to wane as you make your way up. sun begins to set as you get towards just past the Bramblewood Forest. You see off to the east a good few miles. You see the dawn mist pines and you see the mountains uh, the hills north of you. The, uh, the Umbra Hills north of you. You do you want to push through the night or are you going to I think we should make camp. That would work. <gasps> Wait. Clover. Did anyone leave food for for Parm and Nugget and Raven? Who? My chickens. Oh, yeah. Aster stayed behind, so I'm sure she took care of everything. Can we... Can we... Tell her to feed the chickens. I forgot them. <laughs> How far can you message people, Finnick? Any distance? Yeah, I mean, do you want to message Aster and ask her to feed the chickens? <laughs> <laughs> we can take it. We can. We can rest. So, so everything yeah, is okay. Yeah, take a rest and yeah. You named them Nugget, Palm, and Raven? Raven. Yeah, that's the black black golf chicken. You, you know, Raven's another type of bird, right? <laughs> <laughs> it was a good name. Hey. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, it's a great name. I had a friend growing up named Rooster. And what's the was was rooster? Still a bird. So setting up camp. Okay. So Finnick, you message Esther. Aster. Aster. Yes, I message Jester. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll have to convert my sorcery points to do it, but it's fine because we're okay. about to take a long rest. Okay. So. Hey Aster, we found our friend. She asked me to tell you to please feed the chickens. Thank you. <laughs> um, you pooping? <laughs> um, I'll, all right, I'll uh, I'll make sure they get fed before I, I head off, and I'll I'll tell uh, Lyndon to take care of them. Good boy. So he's got it. Thank you, Fennec. No problem. As you all kind of pull the cart off to the side of the road and begin to set up camp for the night, what would you guys like to do for the night? We should 100% take watch. Yeah. We should take watch. And Tristan's not going to be any more further than 10 feet from Whisper at any time. Right. And not in a creepy way, yeah. just in a... Does anyone want to do it? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
So, as you set up camp, who wants to watch first? Who's taking first watch? I'll take first watch. Does anyone want to do it with me? Tristan? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the pair of you start your first watch. Go ahead and both of you roll perception checks for me. Um, you both have dark vision, right? We're doing yeah. first watch. I'm also going to be playing my flute while I'm hanging out while they're all trying to sleep lightly, not loud. Okay. <laughs> uh, 21. Okay. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. All right. Yeah, good watch. <laughs> all right. So both of you kind of sit down and begin to scan the, the surrounding area during your watch. Uh, a few hours tick by and Nothing immediately catches your attention that would strike you as suspicious or dangerous. During our watch, there'll be moments where he'll keep almost looking like he wants to say something and then stop and then continue to look out into the space and then play. I think it's really cool that you know how to play an instrument. To be honest, I don't even think I'm that good at this. I just, You're I just press. So good. <laughs> I love when you play. It's like the only background noise, the only good background noise we get. When I was little, it turned. It was my instrument to play. To be honest, I don't even like this thing. I play it. It helps my nerves. It calms me down, and it helps me to relax. And I also hope that when people are around that it does the same and I try to do that. I like to say that I do it to help them, but I mostly do it to help me relax. Well, why don't you like it then? Because I think I'm terrible at it. You're not, though. You're really good. Can I roll a persuasion check? Yeah, go ahead. I'm just like making my own rules. <laughs> Plus uh, two. Fifteen. Pretty convincing, Tristan. You're pretty good. Here, let me try. I, um, I, I, I wipe it on my shirt and then hand it over to her. And my hand, my 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 fingers are like thick and furry. <laughs> Go ahead and roll so a performance I'm check for her. <laughs> roll a performance check for me. Yeah, you're you're pretty good, Tristan. <laughs> Now it's working, Joe. She's just ignoring you okay. intentionally oh, no. for <laughs> narrative purposes. Got it. I was making like fart noises with my mouth. I'm sorry. What did you say? <laughs> it's a roller performance check. Oh, performance. <laughs> Unfortunately, it wasn't that bad. Uh, fourteen. Okay. So, yeah, uh, I'm gonna say that match is almost as good as I kind of am at it. <laughs> No. And as she's playing, I'm going to, I don't know how long you're going to play for, but I'm going to actually just watch and sit back and look up as it's being played and I'll playing go. Well, I will play until our watch is over. <laughs> okay. I'm going to say that I, everything is random and I think I'm enjoying this randomness and I think I'm enjoying this time with all of you guys. I hope that we can honestly, and then his face gets serious and you see his eyes kind of almost change a little bit and the scales kind of glow because normally he covers the scales when he, you see them kind of half glow. He goes. We have to protect her, don't we? Yeah, but honestly, I'm scared that we're not ready. Your siblings seem really powerful. But I do want to do this. If it's important to her, it's important to us. I just hope that we can take them on. If she says that, I'm going to just, I'm easily, I'm going to grab my flute back, kneel back, and go, 
with a lot of other thoughts in my mind. If we can handle this, then laugh and then start playing. And happily, and as I'm playing, I'm going to rock back and forth and shoulder nudge her every time I go back while I'm playing until she gets into the groove of the song, until we let the waves of the nerves go away. All right, roll a performance check for me and add your proficiency modifier. Right, green one, go. 11. Let me see. I haven't used that. Uh, where's my proficiency? I haven't seen that. I haven't used that in a while. It's at the top. It should I be plus think, three, okay, buddy. 12, 13, 13, 14. Okay. Play it just as well as Clover did. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I made better sounds. <laughs> All right. As your watch comes to an end, who would like to take second watch? Okay. I can do it. Okay. So Finnick and Whisper, as you get up for your shift, go ahead and both of you roll perception checks for me. Eighteen. Sixteen. Okay. Um a the time ticks on as the night begins to wane. Um, you both hear the faint sounds of fluttering wings in the trees above you, though you can't exactly see what's making that noise, whether it be bats or birds or some other nighttime creatures just kind of making their way through the forest. Um, besides that, nothing else strikes you as odd during your shift. Hmm. Whisper, can I ask you a question? Yeah. How long have you been running? Probably a couple of months now. Uh, I don't know, I kind of lost track of time a little bit. But it hasn't been that, that, that long. Still a recent thing for you? Yeah. I'm scared. Yeah. I'm scared too. Are you Trust okay? <laughs> it's kind of a loaded question. Yes and no. I'll tell you something. I've been on the run too. For the past two, almost three years. Did bad things happen where you're from, too? Yeah. And funny Sorry. enough, my family was the ones responsible for it, and I couldn't take it anymore, so I left. Sounds familiar. But trust me, the last month has been a hell of a lot easier with a group of friends. Yeah, I'll, I'll agree with that. <laughs> Thanks for coming to get me. Of course. I mean, you're the one that I met first out of this group. I know. That's true. We kicked ass. I think we kick more ass together than we I do separately, I had learned. I mean... The strings better in numbers. Yeah, for sure. And I hope we can get stronger together. We will. I know we will. You want some pig? Sure. Rip off some. And I make sure Talon gets some. I'm amazed that you found him, though. I yeah, mean... he must have been busy before. Did you bribe him with food? Yes, with the last of my pork belly. And then I realized I forgot to take food when I ran away. So then I was like, shit, this is it. Yeah, when running away, 
on a spur of the moment thing, I tend to forget a lot of stuff. Yeah, like like the chickens. Thank you for for making sure that they're taken care of. I feel a little guilty about that. That's okay. The chickens will eat the bugs in the grass if they need to. Okay. They're pretty sufficient. Self-sufficient. <laughs> So, as your shift comes to an end, Gormra being the last left, does anyone, uh, uh, Tristan, I guess you would be able to if you wanted to wake up early, but... I, I was going to say, I'm going to take hours. an exhaustion point when he gets up to stay up with him. Okay. If I can. Yourself, right? You only need the four hours of meditation? Yeah. Oh, that's true. It's been a while since I've had to use that. Yes. So... <laughs> It depends on how many hours has gone past since our first shift and his shift, but I was going to plan on staying up until he got up to You probably would be an hour into his shift. Okay. So, Gormrog, roll a perception check for me. Donald, did you say you would stay up until my shift? I was planning on not going to sleep until you came out, and then... So you would have been up for the second shift as well. Yes. And then not gone to sleep till okay. All right, so then you're if I'm taking social point, I will. All right, so are you staying up? Or I'm confused. Yes, 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 okay. yes. <laughs> Shit, he was eavesdropping. <laughs> oh, uh, no. That's a 19 on perception. Okay. Your shift goes by without incident. Nothing striking you as odd during your tenure. And, uh, um, while I'm awake I'm going to take off my backpack put it down gently next to everybody pick up my quarter staff take maybe 10, 15, 20 feet away from everybody and I'm going to start going through the different levels of lessons that I have learned as a monk. And I'm going to, under my breath, recite the lessons that were taught. This is form one. We practice these techniques because this is the basics of a monk's entire journey. Without Form 1, there is no Form 2. There is nothing. We practice this even once we have mastered everything else. And I'll go through this at the different levels. This is Form 2. This is Form 3. Okay. And then I'm going to swap to my sword, do the same. Swap to my darts, do the same. Just do... Uh, unarmed same thing um and just test myself okay tristan uh as you take a point of exhaustion having not slept at all that night um mm -hmm. you see gormrog practicing his forms is there anything you wanted to do in this moment um i'm gonna sit and watch for a second and i'm gonna wait for him to come i'm not gonna interrupt him while he's doing it when i realize he's like getting tired or relaxed and starting to put stuff down i'm gonna walk up to him and do the normal put my forehead to his head put it forward and then go to walk away and then go into his shoulders and start like trying not to cry, but start crying. Not for a long time, just a couple of, you know, it wasn't intentional. He goes and puts his head into his shoulders and some tears come out with not a lot of sounds. And then he grabs him by his hair and pulls it back kind of hard and puts his forehead back again. And then does the whole looking at him, he knows. Don't you dare tell a fucking person and gives him a hard push away <laughs> and sits, doesn't 
doesn't walk away, but just he knows. Look at me. Wipe your face. We gotta. And I'm gonna let him do whatever it is he's going to do. Okay. As Tristan, you make your way away from Gromrog, the rest of you begin to stir and awake for the next day as the sun starts to rise. Uh, the weather is pretty warm for this day. The sky is clear. All the overhead clouds have kind of cleared off for the day. And you all gather yourselves, get back in the cart, and begin to continue your trek north once more. Uh, someone go ahead and roll a d20 for me. I'll do it. Likely. <laughs> That's a five. Okay. Um, so, the day goes by with little incident. Um, and as you get towards the late latter half of the day, the mountains on either side of you, as you make your way up through the Umbra Hills, you come on a village you've been before, Whisper. You come to Joran Village. The village kind of carved almost into the by the base of one of the mountains of the Umbra Hills. the It's a small, almost trading post of a town. Um, but um, this may be where we call it for the night as okay, we quick. prepare to move on to the rest of this journey. Quick question. Since we spent the first half of the day just sitting in the cart traveling, yeah. can Tristan have meditated so that he doesn't have to be exhausted? Sure. <laughs> um, I was going to ask if it's me and Gormrog at the reins again. Okay. Yeah, I'm alright with that. Okay. I didn't know if we had time for more roleplay or not. Oh, we have plenty of time for roleplay, but anything up to the point of the, getting into the village, we can roleplay. Okay. So... As I'm sitting there, giving directions, <laughs> I'm going to say in a hushed tone, hoping that the people in the back can't hear me, I had another nightmare. Mm -hmm. And you guys are in it this time. Okay. And Ellen was in it. And his wyvern. And the Dawnfather. I don't oh. believe that it was actually him. It was terrifying. What did he look like? He was large. He emanated pure light. He had no distinct features. Yeah, that coming at you? That sounds pretty terrifying. I mean, spiky hands over there that the Talon took care of, like, that's bad enough, but a being of pure light that's defined as a god? Yeah, no wonder you're terrified. That, that makes perfect sense. That means your brain is working. That is the correct response. But, um... Listen, us in a dream with Belen 
and like the 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 night after Bellin attacks us. And Whisper and I went down pretty significantly. That is a normal response to a traumatic event. It's your brain's way of processing it. I understand that it was scary. And I'm not saying you're wrong for feeling that way. But allow yourself to process what happened. I was terrified during that battle. I mean, I've already talked to you about how I wish I was there sooner, or that I haven't that I hadn't even left the house. Mm -hmm. I feel like things could have gone very differently. Mm -hmm. That is correct. It could have gone very differently. And it could have been exactly the same. And we'll never know. So all you're doing is staying stuck. And what could have, might have, should have never happened. You are... Chaotic. And so is the rest of the world. I've seen the same spell come out of your hands six different ways so far. Yeah. Yeah. And I have seen you do things that I've never seen anybody do. Like what? You, um... You don't seem to... waver at the idea of authority or structure or hierarchy or divine nefarious you see people on the same level as everyone else no one is above or below and that is inspiring. And My you may be terrified, but you do things anyway. And that's how you define bravery. But you seem to be unable to see that. My family thought as everybody is below them. Hmm. Mm hmm. It's the way I was raised. And they didn't like it when I started thinking for myself. I read that before. Mm hmm. And the shit that I had seen and gone through is what made me run. Run. Made me run. The past couple of years has been pretty uneventful. Working jobs here and there, traveling. It's hard getting back into what feels like chaos. It, Again. It, not, a, not, not a bad thing, like we're actually doing it for good reasons. But still, this is really... How is this not chaotic? It is chaotic. Everything is. Life is chaotic. That's what I'm trying to tell you. 
you are chaos. This is chaos. A woman just appeared in the back of our cart, taunting our friend. That's chaos. And at the same time, the fact that somebody is able to put themselves in a place that they are not and communicate with people. The fact that life happens is what it is the fact that you are here and showed up last night when you did that's beautiful but it's still chaos now would you and any other individuals who happen to be listening like some carrot sticks I'm having my own conversation. Okay. I just assume you might be there, so I figured I'd offer <laughs> anyway. I'm happy being ignored. It's fine. <laughs> um. Actually, fuck it. I'm gonna just. Okay. Oh fuck yeah! Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> So what conversation are you having, Clover? I mean, since we're all about pep talks, um, whisper. I know that this kind of stuff is hard to talk about and you're not really like a talky person, but I just want you to know that when your family constantly berates you and talks down to you and manipulates you and makes you feel less worthy than you actually are, that doesn't mean that they're right. That just means that they're abusive and toxic. And anyone who is able to lead an abusive and toxic relationship, especially when it's their family, that's one of the strongest people. So I'm sure that over the past, you're an elf, how old are you, like 100? over the past like hundred years or so I'm sure that they've got into your head and I'm sure that that's really like 20 down a little bit but I think that you're one of the strongest and smartest people I know you want a carrot stick? I'm not gonna say anything I'm gonna reach out for a hug oh <laughs> <laughs> What if they're a little right? I wasn't very good at, at a lot of things. No, they're me. They they probably manipulated you into thinking that you weren't good at things. I'm sure that there's lots of things you're good at, and as soon as we kill them, we'll find out all of the things you're good at. <laughs> That's weird to say. You're really good at picking feathers and friends, like Talon. I look out and see him following the cart. Yeah, he's pretty cool. And you're really <laughs> good at turning into animals. Like, I've never done that before. So you're better than me. Mm. I'm getting better. I don't know anyone else in my family who can do that. It's really cool and unique. There's probably a lot more things that your family can't do than you can do, and they just depend on their money and their fortune and their place in society to get them through everything, and they would never survive out here like you have. Maybe, yeah. They didn't. They don't leave that much. My dad used to leave all the time, but the rest of them, well, at least they used to stay home. But now I don't know, so everything seems different. Yeah, it sounds like it. Thanks, Clover. Welcome. I'm glad to work with you. I'm glad too. Tristan, play us a song. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna just as we're going along, just play. Okay. Wait, wait. I wanna whisper to both of you. What about Gormrock's test? 
Didn't, didn't he have a test to take? Um, that might be a pin question. Um, no. Tristan? I'm going to pause for a second and not answer and then go back to playing. He's busy right now. I'll, I'll ask him later. He just made a carrot, so he can't be that busy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I messaged you, Whisper, if you could tell me the answer to that message. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to message you. Gomer. Okay. Um. Gomer. I feel like I should tell you where I went. I had a meeting with Pike and Citron. Mm -hmm. If I think I already told you, I'm <laughs> not the best at remembering things, but. It was regarding my family. I felt like I needed to take a step. Take a step forward. But that nightmare, I feel like it pushed me back. I don't know that I know enough about your family to understand what it is you're telling me. When you say you went to see Pike and, and Citron, what do you mean? The Platinum Dragon's Rest. I was hoping that they would be able to train me, help me become stronger. Uh -huh. Increase my ability in some way that I'd be able to help everybody while still putting up a good fight. You say that like you're disappointed with the outcome. I just don't know if I should have waited or not. Wait until... Were... Seemed like opportunity Did... coming. Wait until what? Till we left to head to Leering Gordon? Would have been silly. I don't know. Pike knows my family, so I feel like she would be able to give some sense of direction. What'd you learn? Honestly, I have to do what I feel is right. Mm -hmm. <sighs> How about that? That's, uh... My parents were bad people and I want to take them to Add them to the list. Trust me, they're already on there. Fists of fate. Breaking through generational trauma one family at a time. <laughs> okay. It's really eerie how much Whisper and I have in common. Do you also have six siblings? Oh, no, I was an only child. Because <laughs> I know Clova also has six, and we've only met two of them, but like, I we've also six. met two of Whispers. What? I, I was their only child. Oh. And because I turned out the way I did, they were just like, no. So instead of a small army it's just going to be your parents that that's that's fine i'm fine with just being um, with two people instead of no. like seven they're a part of a bigger tribe of people that do the same things okay uh we're we're gonna have to put that on the back burner then uh because I don't even know Whisper's family's last name, unless it's just of Liringorn. Uh, but 
you know, we'll get through them. We'll set things right for her. I'm figure out what comes next. One step at a time. Okay. Does anyone have anything else? Okay. So, as your cart begins to pull up into the town of Joran Village, that is where we are going to call it for the night. I want to thank everyone for this tense episode i'll say um no joe there weren't any tents we slipped <laughs> in the cart <laughs> sometimes i want to stab you <laughs> sometimes i want to stab you um all right well let's see who are we gonna raid tonight i have an announcement okay what is your announcement uh, we have picked our game that we're playing on Good Fairy Cafe next week. It is going to be <sighs> Big Motherfucking Crab Truckers. And it's going to be absolutely ridiculous. Uh, so I hope you'll tune in with us uh, next week at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. <laughs> okay. Anyone have anything else they want to plug tonight before we... The uh, shout out, shout out who? Uh, shout out to um, the three of them who are in cosplay of their characters right now. Yes, yes. Because like those Can ears, those ears, those ears, like the bandana and the hair and the makeup, the, the fits, like Fabulous. killing it. Fabulous. Love it. <laughs> um, Blackwater D and D. That's what someone said. So that's what we'll do. Thank you to everybody who came out to uh, join us for this little adventure. Uh, if you want, if you want to catch up on past episodes, uh, the first one through twenty are on our YouTube channel under the same name. Um, and. Uh, the week after Goodberry, we should be back with Fortune Fates um, for another episode. Are we huh? sure about that? No, I'm not. I'm asking. We are off the next two weeks, and then we will be back in week three that. weeks. Yeah, I believe. Right, next, there you go. Yeah. Next week but is Goodberry. But if I'm wrong, you can always confirm in our Discord in the schedule tab. Yes. <laughs> Join us. I will, I, will, I will do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, Donald's like, we have a Discord? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, everyone. We love you all. We're going to go raid out, but uh, I'm going to switch to the stream ending screen so I can easily edit things. Uh, we love you guys. Good night. <laughs>